Dear friends, this Shabbat, we pick up the narrative of Deuteronomy with the Israelites standing east of the Jordan River, gazing across it to the promised land, their future home. The subject of Deuteronomy is the Devarim, the words Moses speaks to the people as they prepare to enter that land. This week's parasha is Re'e, which means see. See this day I set before you blessing and curse, Moses begins. Follow with me on your handout that you received when you entered, or if you're watching at home, it will be on your screen. And I'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 11. See this day I set before you blessing and curse. Blessing if you obey the commandments of Adonai your God that I enjoin upon you this day. And curse if you do not obey the commandments of Adonai your God, but turn away from the path that I enjoin upon you this day and follow other gods whom you have not experienced. When Adonai your God brings you into the land that you are about to enter and possess, you shall pronounce the blessing at Mount Gerizim and the curse at Mount Ebal. Both are on the other side of the Jordan, beyond the west road that is in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah near Gilgal by the Terebinths of Moreh. Now the slopes of Mount Gerizim are green and lush. Ebal's face is rocky and dead. And the people are to camp between these two mountains, half the people ascending each. Again, take a look. After you have crossed the Jordan, the following shall stand on Mount Gerizim when the blessing for the people is spoken. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And for the curse, the following shall stand on Mount Ebal, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites shall then proclaim in a loud voice to all the people of Israel, Cursed be anyone who makes a sculptured or molten image, abhorred by Adonai, a craftsman's handiwork, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall respond, Amen. Those atop Ebal, the desolate slope, pronounce the curses that will befall the Israelites if they disobey the commandments. Aror atah, cursed shall you be in your comings, and cursed shall you be in your goings. Those atop the fertile Grizim affirm the blessings to come to them if they uphold the commandments. Baruch atah bevoecha, uvaruch atah betzeitecha, blessed shall you be in your comings, and blessed shall you be in your goings. So I want to ask you a question, and I really am looking for a response. What do you imagine this ritual is all about? What is its purpose? Yes? To honor duality, you can't have one without the other. You can't have the blessings without the curses? Okay, that's good. What else? Yeah. Put God first. You have a choice, and you have to choose the right thing. And this ritual places the choices about as clearly before the Israelites as any ritual possibly could. And they need reminders. Who's not going with them into the promised land? Moses won't be with them. So this ritual serves as a powerful reminder of the choice that is before them. Both are there. It's up to them to choose. Now, the parasha speaks to me with very special purpose. This Shabbat Mevarchim Elul, this Sabbath on which we announce the coming month of Elul, which begins next Thursday. Because Elul culminates with Rosh Hashanah, the month encourages us to begin, if we haven't yet, 
the hard work of cheshbon hanefesh, self-examination, and teshuvah, the attempt to clarify the priorities in our lives. During Elul, we, in effect, camp between Grizim and Ebal and are reminded that the decisions we will make about how we live our lives in the coming year are of great import. Not all that comes our way is of our own making, of course, and that is often as true of the joys as it is the sorrows. But our decisions do impact the way we meet what may come. For example, will we meet the future strengthened by faith and family and friends? Or will those relationships have been weakened by neglect? Unfortunately, navigating life's uneven moral terrain is not so straightforward as the duality, the idealistic vision that Deuteronomy suggests. Often the most important choices we make are not so defined as the verdant slope on the left and the perilous precipice on the right. Often the best decisions require some measure of risk. And so a better text for us may actually be this last one from Genesis, where in chapter 13, Abraham and his nephew Lot are wandering the area of the Dead Sea Basin. Because their herds have grown too numerous to graze together, Abraham and Lot must separate. Abraham, here still called Abram, allows Lot to choose his path. Is not the whole land before you? Let us separate. If you go north, I will go south. And if you go south, I will go north. Lot looked about him and saw how well watered was the whole plain of the Jordan, all of it. This was before Adonai had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, all the way to Zoar, like the garden of Adonai, like the garden of Egypt. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they parted from each other. Abram remained in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the plain, pitching his tents near Sodom. Lot looks out at the fertile Jordan River Valley, green like Mount Gerizim, and then he pivots in the other direction to view the Judean hills, barren like Mount Ebal. What does he choose? Huh? The easy way. He chooses the fertile plain. And Abraham knew he would. Abraham also knew that his future lay in the rocky wilderness of Canaan God had called him to settle and cultivate. As the mention of Sodom and Gomorrah suggests, Lot's fortunes turn quickly with those cities' destruction. Abraham's destiny we know. Not without hard work, he goes on to build a land and a people. Re'e, see, Moses had declared. To return to our portion, what was it exactly that Moses expected the Israelites to see as they looked across the river? The land that lay before them? Perhaps. But the command re'e comes from a root which also means to prophesy, to envision, to look beyond the near horizon with its doubts and fears, to look even at a barren landscape and see in it the potential for renewal and growth. Perhaps Re'e meant that they should fix their gaze on that, the future's possibilities, and not lose sight of them. For on the near horizon there was a land to win, and the going would be difficult. But if they could, A, see beyond the immediate moment with all its uncertainty to a future lived in peace and prosperity on their new land, then they would have the determination to persevere, no matter how difficult the going got along the way. Sometimes one must believe before one sees. Imagine before one creates. 
in these coming weeks of spiritual preparation, may we be so fortunate that the right choices reveal themselves as plainly as their rewards. But may we also know that life's blessings are sometimes more difficult to discern and that often they require tilling and planting and nurturing. So may we too be able to see beyond the immediate moments of our lives with their doubts and fears to fix our eyes on the blessings the coming new year might bring. And with faith in our own goodness, may we advance with courage toward our hopes and dreams. Baruch atah b'voecha uvaruch atah b'tzeitecha. May we be blessed in our comings and our goings.